Hello everybody, Carolina Tony coming to you today from near Clinton, Tennessee. And we are at the Museum of the Appalachia. It's a museum that's dedicated to all the folks in the Appalachian Mountains. How they lived, what they did, what they ate, where they went, all of that stuff. And we're going to explore this right after this station identification. This is the Tom Cassidy house. He spent the last few years of his life living here. This is the original tiny home. He once said, I have a cot, I have a chair, I have a stove, and I have a fiddle. What more could a man need? From 1920 to 1989, he was a musician from Union County, Tennessee. Spent last few years of his life living in this house. Tiny. Here's Gwen Sharp's Playhouse. James Hubbard, he lost his arm when he was just a kid, but he was able to make a living traveling the hills and the valleys, buying and trading horses and mules. And he also served in Union County Tax Assessor. He was a deputy sheriff, a school teacher, even a truant officer. And his only daughter, Gwen, was only five years old. And he hired his neighbor, Will Elkins, to build this playhouse for her. Here are just some of the folks of Southern Appalachia. It's because of these folks here this museum was started. This is Asa Jackson's fabulous perpetual motion machine. He designed and built this in the mid 1800s to produce its own power and to run forever. According to legend, he kept this invention hidden in a cave during the Civil War, and he took it apart after he passed away. No one could figure out how to put it together. So the secret of the perpetual motion machine is gone forever. Old saddle, saddle stirrups and bits for the horse or mule. And morning clothing. Back in the 19th century, when someone passed away, it was appropriate for members of the family to, to wear black for a period of time. Work by folk artists. And I said earlier, didn't have Walmarts or Targets, so they had to make it. Clay pots, porcelain pots. This is called the Fisk Metallic Burial Case. It says it's the most remarkable coffin ever patented here in America. It's made from iron. Kind of reminds you of a mummy sarcophagus. And it has a, a viewing glass. 
You can look down and see the body. Here's a cover that would cover it up. They said that John C. Calhoun from the great state of South Carolina was buried in a Fisk casket. Very famous person from Tennessee was Sergeant Alvin York. War hero, World War One. He captured a lot of German soldiers. There's a gun that was signed by his wife. He called her Miss Gracie. And here is a leather jacket that belonged to him. Actually, here's a photograph of him wearing that jacket. There's Sergeant York right there. Soon after he returned from the war, the Nashville Rotary Club actually bought him a almost 400 acre farm, good bottom land. And he designed and built this thing called a clog buster. And it was pulled, pulled by mules and would pull over the rough terrain to break the dirt clogs up. Folks in the mountains, a lot of times, didn't have much to do. They'd sit on the porch and whittle. And here are some whittlings. There is a mountain boar. And how about a chair in a bottle? Hmm. Folks in the mountains, they could, they had to make just about anything that they used. Here is a commode seat guitar and a ukulele, a bedpan banjo. An ironing board guitar. Felix Casey Jones. He would travel the mountains just looking for strange and odd things, kind of like what I do. And he found this, this odd formation in a walnut tree. And he called it the devil. I would agree. Pretty creepy. This fella here, Raymond Fairchild, I've actually met him before and played at a concert that he actually played at in my hometown. He's got a music place over in Maggie Valley still today. But here is one of his prized possessions. This is a fiddle made from a jawbone. And it's signed by some pretty famous people. Even has Bill Monroe and Ralph Stanley has signed this thing. Banjo made from a hubcap. All types of homemade banjos. This is Luther Parley, and Luther had a grandson, and the two were best friends. Here's Luther. Later on in life, he became totally blind, and even after he went blind, him and his grandson became inseparable. Often, the grandson would lead him around, but he could still whittle. Old Luther could still whittle, and he made these wooden toy tools for his grandson. This is an original photograph of Dr. Andy Osborne's medicine house. And it's been recreated here in about the same size. He was born in 1969 and died in 1937. And he built this tiny doctor's office to take care of the needs of the 
folks of the mountains. Said folk art in Appalachia. Generally, these folks didn't do art. They didn't decorate their furniture or use things what we call fancy. The tools, the furnishings of the building were strong and sturdy, but not pretty. And they seldom carved it just for the sake of art, but there are a few exceptions. And this is where we get folk art. There once was a fella known as Charlie Fields, better known as Cedar Creek Charlie. He never learned to read or write, and he was one of the 11 children born here in Lebanon, Virginia, about 100 miles from this museum. After his father died and all the other children left home, he stayed home to take care of his mother. And after he died, after his mother died, he started a peculiar hobby of painting everything in polka dots. And this room here is a replica of what his bedroom looked like that they found after he died. This was his house and polka dots on everything. Cedar Creek Charlie. Now, you're not going to believe this, but Mark Twain's family was from nearby, from the Appalachia, and this is his family cabin. Let's go take a look. The Mark Twain family cabin was actually moved here from Possum Trot into Fentress in Fentress County. Here is a smokehouse. General Bunch House. Very, very simple furnishings. Okay, they say this is a Daniel Boone cabin, but notice it has a dirt floor. And that was. That was pretty common in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Here is a picture of the children in this very room around 1929. Well, I am going to end our tour here of the Museum of the Appalachia right next to this likeness of Samuel Clemens, also known as Mark Twain. Now, a lot of folks don't know but Mark Twain's family was from nearby here, Possum Trot, of 
all places. What a pretty undignified name for someone that was very dignified, at least in his older age. Thank you for stopping by. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to go down here and click subscribe. After that, ring the bell so be notified every time we put a video out. And until next time, y'all have a good day.